Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 6 in Going 2D. Today we are going to uh, reset and restart our ball whenever the player scores and also just do a few cool fixes here and there to make the game better. These are things we need to get out of the way before we can start doing sound work, uh, which we will probably do in the next episode. So as always I've opened up Unity. And uh, if we go in here, let's first off select the ball and just center it, because it annoys me that it needs to be all the way up there. So now that we have this ball centered, uh, we can go ahead and uh, take a look at what happens right now when the ball goes out of the screen. We can see that our score um, goes up, but the ball doesn't reset. And also another thing that um, that is not like it should be is that these two numbers it might be hard to see are a little bit to the right. And the reason why is because whenever you uh, center something in Unity, it centers from an anchor point. And when it comes to GUI like text, that anchor point is by default in the top left corner. So what we need to do in scripting is we need to subtract about half uh, the width of the both the 0 and the 1 here so that it will be actually centered. So if we go ahead and find our GM object, go under the game manager script, so double click it to open it up in game uh, mono develop. We can go down here where we create our labels and then here we subtract 150 from the center, but we also need to subtract half the width. And I've played around with this a bit and it lies about 12 points. So that should be just fine. And here, because we say uh, plus 150, we still need to say minus because it's still oriented in the left-hand corner. So just do minus 112, minus 112 on both of them. So uh, let's see. And now these are uh, centered. So that might have been hard to see, but if we moved up our ball uh, in the center, you could see that they were not perfectly aligned. Cool, so uh, what we can do now is we can take care of the ball resetting and restarting. So to do this, let's open up the uh, game manager. No, the uh, that's the ball script we need to take care of here. So go under ball, then ball control. And we can see right now, uh, whenever we start the game, we just do uh, a random uh, function that uh, will make it shoot out to either side. And the uh, first thing I want to change here is because I think it's a little bit sh slow as is. So I want to change this to something like 100 or 110. You can of course go ahead and make a variable for this. Actually, let's just go ahead and do that. So let's call this var um, ball speed. Uh, make it a float value and make it equal to, let's say, 100 by default. Then in here, instead of 80, we're just going to write ball speed. And here in negative 80, we're just going to do minus 1 times ball speed. Actually, I'm pretty sure you can just do minus ball speed. Let's see if you can do that. So let's save it out. And we get no errors, hopefully. No, we don't. And now the ball speed is 100, and that's just a little faster. Cool. Um, yeah, so what we could do here is instead of just having it start right when the game opens uh, because that it gets pretty hectic and, and most of the time the ball just goes flying off before you get to react. Uh, let's put a little bit of a yield statement in here, a little bit of a wait. So um, let's move all of this code into another function that we can call when we want to. So let's control x that or command x it. So let's cut it and then down here write a function called function uh, let's do go ball and uh, here open up some brackets and inside of this function we can simply paste all everything we copied before. So that's all this function needs, needs to do. And so up here in the function start we can simply say yield wait for seconds. So this will uh, delay the next action by two seconds because we've input it the number two and again you can make this into a variable if it's something you want to tweak and then then let's do go ball so now when we play the game if we save this and go back into unity 
we will play it, it will wait 2 seconds and then launch the ball. Which is just perfect for just getting your fingers ready on the keyboard and such. Great, so next thing is we need to uh, be able to reset our ball whenever we want. So let's do an another function called reset ball. And, oops, there and then uh, the brackets. And inside of here we are first off going to, um, yeah, let's first just make the velocity zero so that um, Okay, let, let me just show you this actually. If we just use the transform.position.x and set that to zero, and then use the transform.position.y, set that to zero. Uh, the problem right, right now is that when we call the reset ball, it will be centered, uh, but it will fly out, out immediately. And the reason for this is that it still has the velocity that is it's generated. So if it's traveling at a velocity of 100, it will just uh, teleport back here, but still fly out. So what we need to do is we need to also reset the velocity. So before the transform that position, we need to say rigid body 2D dot velocity dot y equals zero, and just the same with the x value too. So rigid body 2D dot velocity dot x equals zero. And uh, what we then want to do is we want to put in a yield. And because we are currently playing uh, and uh, we already have our hands on the keyboard and such, we'll just do something like 0 0.5 seconds. And then say, go ball. And so once we call the reset ball function, we uh, it will center everything, wait for half a second, and then shoot out the ball. So that's all we need. Uh, to call from our sidewall. So now let's go under our sidewall script. You can find it under GM and then uh, left wall and then double click it. And uh, in here, right after we bump up the score, we need to say reset ball. So we simply call this by first off using our reference to the ball. And that's the hit info because we have we have collected some info about what's hit this, this collider. We've called this info hit info. We've checked if this uh, collider is actually the ball. And so now we can assume that inside this if statement, hit info is our ball. So we can simply do hit info dot game object. And this is more efficient than searching for the object or referencing it through a var variable, because then you have to make sure that that variable so uh, always stay connected and such. So hit info dot game object. And then we can do dot send message. And then we need to open up uh, a parentheses. And in here, we simply write the name of the function, which is reset ball. And whenever you need to write something in strings, it will probably not throw an error if it's wrong. So it's a, just a good idea to go in, copy the function name inside of the strings here, just to avoid errors. And uh, then just close this up and it will call the function reset ball whenever we hit a wall. So now when we hit play and the ball just flies out, it resets, waits for half a second and then goes back. So now you can see this is working just how we want it. And if we start, if I start ac actually playing here, we can see that uh, our game is, is quite fun to play. Great. Um, of course, if you want to make this game harder, you can add some uh, randomness to whenever it hits a player so that you can't quite predict uh, the X velocity. And you can do this inside of the um, ball control script here with the on collision enter. You can simply add some uh, random Y velocity uh, using random dot range. So that's a challenge for you to figure out. And please, if you can get it to work, uh, write it in the comments so that other people can, can use it also. Great. So that's pretty much it for uh, the first part of this uh, video. Uh, let's just, actually the whole video, let's just, um, first off, when we hit play now, uh, because the velocity is, is higher, it can sometimes like, uh, look like the ball is going through our players, especially if we bump it up even more. It really depends on your frame rate, and my frame rate is not too great um, because I'm recording, 
But if we just try to uh, bump up the ball speed by selecting the ball and changing the ball speed to let's say 130 and now hit play. Let's see if I can catch it. Uh, we can see that it looks like the ball is uh, colliding all kinds of weird ways. And really uh, with a good frame rate it should look like the ball is coming in and then going right past and then bouncing off. So just to avo avoid these weird kinds of collisions, I'm going to first of all uh, keep the ball speed at about 100. You can go up to 130 if needed. Uh, but I'm also going to select the player here, both players. And then I'm going to take the uh, box collider uh, X size and I'm just going to bump this up a bit. So just bump it up to something like 0 0.45. Um, let's do 4.3. And uh, that just makes the collider more solid and it will just give an overall better result. So when we now play, um, it's just more solid and it reacts better to the ball. But that's something to play around with uh, until it works for you. Again, it really depends on the frame rate, the size of your game, all that weird stuff. So that's basically uh, it for this video. I know it was uh, pretty short compared to many others. But uh, next time we can go ahead and do some sound work. Um, so if you just want a, a quick teaser maybe, um, you can see here in the 2D assets pack, I've uh, found some audio, I've found some game over audio, which I've made a bonus audio and a hit audio. So uh, I'm not going to play it, but that's for next time. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.